Uh, in this speech, we heard a lot of real this, real that. It really looked really empty. It was uh, a government that's run out of ideas and run out of steam. We, we see a throne speech that does not respond to the urgency of the crises that we're up against. We've got a housing crisis, no real action to actually improve or tackle the housing crisis. We see um, a lot of, right now, immediate impacts of the climate crisis, but this throne speech doesn't respond to some of the most important, easy first steps, ending fossil fuel subsidies. And we know that Canada is the worst country in the G20 for fossil fuel subsidies. And those are subsidies that are incentivizing fossil fuels instead of going towards helping to incentivize renewable energy. So this is really problematic. Let's talk about cleaner and healthier. Well, certainly not healthier. There's no talk about increasing investments in our health care to keep it publicly funded and well funded. And there's no talk about pharmacare, something that was in the throne speech in the past and they've completely abandoned now. Or dental care, something that we pushed for and was included in previous throne speeches. So it looks like a government's run out of steam and is not responding to the urgency and the problems that people are going through right now. We will, yeah. supporting might not be the best word. We will live with this empty piece of paper, gently read in three languages. What did you make of the Governor General's French? I did not comment on the quality of her French before. I won't today. I had a meeting with her a few weeks ago. It was very interesting. We discussed a lot about the Inuit issues, uh, and I, I saw that she, uh, she understands and speaks French rather well. Uh, the point is not that she does or does not speak French for or by herself. It's because the Prime Minister sent a strange message to all French Canadians and Quebecers when he selected a uh, Governor General which does not, whom does not speak French. What were some more of the things that you would have wanted to have seen in the throne speech today so that it would be more than an empty piece of paper? We would have wanted a strong commitment. Uh, we suggested actually a summit on the financing of health care instead of simply closing doors with uh, prime ministers behind the doors and getting out of there saying we did not agree. This discussion could be held publicly with all prime ministers, health ministers, uh, leader of, of opposition, opposition parties, and then everybody would be in a situation, first of all, all of you, to understand what are the points and arguments and intents of everybody. It seems not to have been uh, accepted as an idea, uh, therefore we got this big nothing. Uh, we will... Uh, come very shortly, it's a matter of hours, before we come with some questions requiring answer much, much more clear than this uh, text which could have been written by a college student. To the Canadians watching at home, I have one message for you. Conservatives will be your voice. We will be the voice for the millions of Canadians being left behind in Justin Trudeau's economy. Today, we heard more of the same from the Trudeau government. What we didn't hear was a plan for the economy, a plan to tackle the cost of living crisis. Wages are flat, and more jobs are part-time and precarious. Young families are being priced out of the neighborhoods they grew up in. Les étudiants des collèges ou des universités renoncent de plus en plus à l'idée de s'acheter une maison Les travailleurs ont de la difficulté à faire le plein d'essence. Seniors are trying to stretch every dollar as inflation wreaks havoc on their fixed incomes. Small businesses are being squeezed by the supply chain crisis, and Mr. Trudeau's tax increases are killing their margins. As we approach the holidays, some parents are worried about putting presents under the tree. And every month, the lines at food banks across this nation grow. The reality facing Canadian families seems to be something that the Liberal government are all too happy to blissfully ignore. The Liberal government's spending is fueling the inflation crisis. The government's ideology is fueling division. And this government's platitudes are becoming barriers to real action. But Canada's Conservatives are here to be the voice for working Canadians. We are here to stand up for the country. Conservatives are proud of this country and will work hard to save it from plunging prosperity, domestic 
division, and international irrelevance. Les dépenses de libéraux aggravent la crise de l'inflation, tandis que leur idéologie alimente la division. Et la médiocrité de ce gouvernement est un obstacle à l'action. Mais les conservateurs du Canada sont ici pour être la voie pour les familles qui travaillent. Nous sommes ici pour défendre le pays. And we're going to be relentlessly focused on an economic recovery for Canadians after the pandemic in every sector of the economy and in every region of this country. Inflation has skyrocketed to 4.7% and is still rising, but the hourly average wage is up only 2% over the last year. Justin Trudeau and his new environment minister want to deny the energy sector the opportunity to supply the world with ethical, emission-lowering Canadian energy at a time that it is most desperately needed. They would rather ship crude oil up the St. Lawrence from Saudi Arabia or Venezuela than ensure a worker in Edmonton or a First Nation community can provide for their family. Canada's Conservatives will be the voice for Canadians who want to see a clean environment and a lower carbon future, but want to leverage Canadian energy and innovation as part of that future. The voice of Canadians who are proud of what we build and what we invent here in Canada, from the critical minerals that power electric vehicles to the steel, aluminum, and people that build them. The voice for Canadians who are proud of their country and want to see real progress on the path to reconciliation and not just symbolic gestures. Sous Justin Trudeau, le Canada est divisé. Pour régler ça, il doit agir en partenaire avec les provinces, non pas en paternaliste. Les conservateurs ont une autre approche, et ce n'est pas l'approche Ottawa, c'est tout. C'est une approche d'écoute et de terrain d'entente. Le gouvernement doit également régler le dossier des langues officielles. C'est une priorité. Mais les libéraux ne font rien depuis six ans. Au plan économique et culturel, les Québécois veulent s'attaquer à la pénurie de main dœuvre à la crise de l'inflation, mais tout en préservant leur identité et leur autonomie. Seule l'équipe conservatrice va livrer la marchandise. Because ideological policies are leaving millions of Canadians behind and are straining our national unity. We must also create solutions to combat the ever-deepening mental health and addiction crisis facing this country. Those battling depression and addiction need to know where to turn for help. We must ensure that wait times are not barriers to accessing real treatment. I want Canadians to know that we heard you in the election. You did not want the pandemic election, and you sent back another minority parliament to get to work. I want you to know that we will stand up for you and make sure your voice is heard in Ottawa. I'm proud to lead a passionate team of women and men who love this country and are committed to its prosperity and to its unity. Les conservateurs vont se concentrer sur la paix, l'ordre et le bon gouvernement. On va aussi éliminer les divisions dans ce pays. Quand nous allons pouvoir travailler avec les autres parties de cette Chambre pour rendre le Canada plus prospère et plus uni, nous allons le faire. We will be tenacious in our efforts to hold this government to account, to demand accountability, and to demand transparency. And we will propose real solutions to get Canada moving again. We will strive to place the interests of the country and its unity at the forefront of everything we do. Conservatives will fight for your interests and not just for liberal special interests. We will serve as a reflection of the country and its hopes, fears, and aspirations. We are here to secure Canada's future. Thank you. Merci beaucoup.